According to the Bible, the mark of the beast is a mark that will be forced on people during the end of the world. And during this time, Revelation chapter 13 says that there will be two prominent figures that will rule the final world government. And those people are the beast of the sea, also known as the Antichrist, and the beast of the earth, also known as the false prophet. And before Jesus returns to earth for the second time, the false prophet will force people to receive this mark of the beast. And because this subject has caused concern or confusion for Christians, here's everything you need to know about the mark that'll happen so that everyone can be aware. Fact number one, the mark of the beast is not 666. It calculates to 666. Revelation chapter 13 verse 18, here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. In this passage, John tells us that the mark of the beast calculates to 666. And the reason why this is important is because I see pictures of horror movies and these demons or possessed people all have the number 666 on their foreheads. And the idea of 666 comes from this passage in the book of Revelation, which is the final book in the Bible. The reason why six is a significant number is because it's commonly known as the number of man, whereas seven is known as the number of completion. People were created on the sixth day, and on the seventh day, God rested and intended man to rest and to remember him. So this 666 kind of conveys this idea of man, man, man that has no need for God. So when it comes to this mark of the beast, Christians can't be exactly sure what it will look like. Some people think that it might look like a barcode. And with the direction we're taking in technology, I feel like the mark might be a chip implantation. But we don't know. What's important though, is to know that the mark will calculate to 666. So what the mark physically looks like is up to speculation. And while this mark may look trivial, it's incredibly dangerous. So pay attention to fact number two, the mark of the beast is an unforgivable sin. Revelation chapter 14 verses nine to 10. Then a third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation. He shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the lamb. In this passage, John sees an angel talking to people and he's saying, if anyone worships the beast or the antichrist and receives this mark on their forehead or hand, they will endure God's wrath and be tormented with fire in the presence of God and his angels. So please understand the gravity of this passage. People who receive this mark will receive God's wrath, and this wrath is felt in the lake of fire, which is the second and final death. Christians have asked me in the past, what if someone gets this mark on their hand, but they cut their hand off? Can they still be saved? And the answer is no, because this passage says that anyone who receives the mark will go through the wrath of God, and the fullness of God's wrath will be death in the lake of fire. So, should the time come and a mark be given in the future that gives allegiance to a future ruler, people must avoid it at all costs. And it will be difficult, or even impossible to avoid. And you'll see why in fact number three, the mark of the beast will be forced upon people. Revelation chapter 13 verses 15 to 17, he was granted power to give breath to the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast to be killed. He causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their foreheads, and that no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. In this passage, John tells us that the beast of the earth, or the false prophet, was given power to give breath or semblance of life to a particular image. To give you some context, the Bible prophesies that there will be an assassination attempt on the Antichrist, and many will believe him to be dead. And we see this in Revelation chapter 13, verses 3 and 14. But despite this deadly wound that was given to the Antichrist, the false prophet will cause him to breathe and speak. And this breath that the false prophet gives will not be given to the beast, but to the image of the beast. 
And then the false prophet will force people to worship and bow down to the beast's image. And then he'll force them to receive his mark. And those who don't will be executed. And no one will be exempt from getting it. It says here that everyone, whether they're small or great, rich or poor, or free or slave, everybody will be forced to receive a mark either on their right hand or on their forehead. And to not have the mark for a long period of time will be difficult because it says that people who don't get it won't be able to buy or sell anything. So it'll only be a matter of time before a decision must be made to either get the mark and have the ability to buy food and water and live life or to not get the mark. Which leads us to fact number four. The mark of the beast will cause persecution to those who don't get it. Revelation chapter 20 verse four. And I saw thrones and they sat on them and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshiped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. In this passage, John describes what he sees, and he sees the souls of people who had been beheaded for testifying about Jesus and for not worshiping the beast, his image, and for not getting his mark on their foreheads or hands. We learn the fate of those who refuse to get the mark of the beast and its beheading. The Antichrist and the false prophet will be communicating a very clear message when they force this mark upon people. And it's either worship them and live or worship Jesus and die. And while that looks bleak and dark, we as Christians need to see the complete picture. For those who choose to get the mark of the beast, they will get to live for a time. But as we learned before, the mark of the beast is an unforgivable sin and those who get it will be damned for all eternity, and they will bear the wrath of God in eternal flames. And for those who don't get the mark, yes, they will die, and they will die by beheading, but their pain will end, and they will rule with God forever afterwards. So simply put, people at this time must choose, either worship the beast and live a little bit longer, but endure God's wrath in eternal flames, or worship God and experience pain for a moment and live with Jesus in heaven forever. And I know this can sound intimidating for Christians who haven't learned about this subject. So if you ever get scared or anxious about this, remember fact number five, the mark of the beast should not be feared. Revelation chapter 21 verses three to four. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and he will dwell with them and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. In this passage, John talks about the end of the age, and note how this is Revelation chapter 21, and the final chapter of the Bible is Revelation chapter 22, which is the next chapter. So this is kind of it. And John says that once everything is said and done, God will be with his people and he will usher in a new world where there will be no more death, sorrow, crying, or pain. People have asked me in the past if sin can ever be brought back into this perfect world and we have another Adam and Eve and the cycle of sin repeats all over again. And the answer is no, because God says that there will be no more death, pain, or crying ever. And this future is what we need to look at as Christians. Philippians chapter three, verse 20 tells us that as believers, our citizenship is in heaven, which means heaven is our home. And please understand that while the consequence of not getting the mark is scary, know that you'll still have to face death eventually. You know, I actually wrote this script while I was at my grandma's memorial. She was in a car accident and I just got done helping with the flowers around her casket. And as I looked at her pictures, I started to think about my death and what I want to communicate and leave behind for the people in my life that I love. So should you ever feel scared or worried about the idea that you might die because of this mark, remember that like Jesus' death, your death might actually save someone. 
And the reason why is because if the time comes and people are lining up to get a mark that will damn them for all eternity, our job as Christians is to convince people not to get it. And to die might prove that point. Now I know that many Christians believe that believers will be raptured before this happens, and I understand that's a possibility, and I hope that's true. At the same time, it doesn't change the fact that Christians will be present during this time, and that those believers need to remember that their home is in heaven, and that their goal during this time needs to be to save as many people as possible, and to tell people about Jesus before it's too late. And don't think that the mark of the beast will always be good to those who get it, because according to fact number six, the mark of the beast will cause increased harm to those who get it. Revelation chapter 16, verse two. So the first went and poured out his bowl upon the earth, and a foul and loathsome sore came upon the men who had the mark of the beast and those who worshiped his image. In this passage, John sees these judgments come upon man, and they come in the form of these bowls being poured out. And the first bowl causes the people who get this mark of the beast to get these sores all around their body. So here's the timeline of what'll happen. During the end times, there will be two rising rulers, the Antichrist and the false prophet, and they will force people to worship the beast and to get this mark. And for those who don't get this mark, they'll systematically kill. So the world at this point will either be devoid of any Christians because the ruling government would have wiped them all out or there will be fewer of them and they would have gone into hiding. And God, through these seven bold judgments, will unleash his wrath upon the people who are responsible for murdering his people. And there will be sores and the sea, the rivers, and all bodies of water will turn to blood and there will be intense heat, incredible darkness, and a great earthquake and hail. And once these seven judgments are complete, it is then that Jesus will return and you can read more about these events in Revelation chapter 16 to 20. So all that to say, don't think that people who get the mark of the beast will have it all good. Because once Christians are gone from the world, God won't have any reason to give any mercy and he'll unleash his fury. So as you can see, the mark of the beast is a heavy subject. And I've heard the concerns of many Christians saying that certain vaccines or a barcode is the mark of the beast. And this is incorrect. So pay attention to fact number seven. The mark of the beast will be clear. Revelation chapter 14, verses nine to 10. Then a third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Now I know we talked about this passage before, but what I want you to see here is that an angel with a loud voice says, if anyone worships this beast and gets his mark, he'll drink the wine of the wrath of God. So note here how crystal clear he is about the consequence of getting the mark. So remember that once this mark is mandated and released, one notable fact that will distinguish this mark from any other type of mark will be punishment by death. So if you're not getting beheaded for not getting a mark, it's not the mark. What I find interesting though, is that we are reaching an age that this mark is possible and probably convenient. During 2020, while COVID was happening, many businesses were refusing service if people didn't have a vaccination card or if people didn't have a mask. And regardless of your beliefs concerning those issues, what I want to highlight is the fact that there was a refusal of service if people didn't comply. On top of that, we're starting to live in a cashless society. A lot of us just tap our credit cards on a screen and things get paid for immediately. So is it really that far-fetched to think that technology will lean towards us just tapping our hands? Or use facial recognition, which by the way, most of our phones already use? Wouldn't this technology actually be perfect to use against identity theft? I feel like we're being brought into an era that this mark will actually make sense. And if that's the case, we as believers need to preach and be ready for the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Okay? So what should you know about the mark of the beast? Remember that the mark of the beast is not 666. It calculates to 666. That it's an unforgivable sin, that it will be forced upon people, that it will cause persecution to those who don't get it, that it shouldn't be feared, 
that it will cause increased harm to those who get it, and that it will be clear. And as a final word, try not to place so much focus on the mark of the beast. This mark is actually a counterfeit of the Holy Spirit, because both the mark and the Holy Spirit mark ownership. And the mark of the beast is just Satan's way of taking complete ownership of people. So as believers, may we place greater attention to the Holy Spirit and be thankful to the one who resides in us and marks us for salvation. And regardless of what the consequences are for not getting the mark, it doesn't compare to the glory and eternal life that awaits God's children. So hold this in your heart and always remember, Jesus loves you.